Hi, everyone. Today, I'd like to speak a little bit about the Boston Massacre and the Boston Massacre site marker in downtown Boston. And this allows us not only to revisit the history and events that led up to the American Revolution, but to also look at the historiography and to question, has the narrative that has been perpetuated over many years led us closer to or further from the truth? We've all heard the story that the Boston Massacre was a atrocity that was committed by British uh, commanders and soldiers against innocent colonists, perhaps bystanders, right? And there are many sources that have led individuals to that conclusion. And, but that leads, that gives us an opportunity to question this, to analyze this, and hopefully bring us closer to the truth, and to also spread that truth. For instance, Robert Middlecoff in The Glorious Cause states that this event was not a plan or a plot, but the result of deep hatred. In other words, the author suggests that context really can tell part of that story, at least, because tensions were running so high that it didn't need to be the result of something that was premeditated, planned, uh, that this was something that had the potential to happen at any point. Karsten Fitz, in an article, a great article, that discusses the fact that African Americans are absent in many of the primary sources that we refer to when studying this, uh, discusses how Crispus Attucks um, was absent in Paul Revere's engraving. But we can also uh, use this to support our argument uh, that these primary sources truly don't tell the truth. And if we look at the purpose of, for instance, the engraving, uh, we know that its intent was to advocate for the colonist cause to oppose uh, British policies. And so we really can't have an objective view of that story if we simply rely on that one source. However, the events, I think, tell a, a, a greater story. For instance, Private Hugh White was guarding the customs house at that time. Uh, this individual got into a, a argument and slight altercation with a colonist. And as a result of that context, many uh, other colonists began to congregate around this individual. And as tensions ran higher, uh, Captain Thomas Preston and soldiers came to the aid, took up a defensive position uh, for uh, Private White. We come to the idea that uh, we've heard these stories that snowballs were thrown and it almost makes it appear as though it's just a nice little snowball fight, right? And that uh, the British soldiers took it wrong. Uh, but we also know that individuals, colonists rather, were carrying around bats, clubs, uh, that pieces of ice, uh, very different than a snowball, uh, were being thrown. And Private Hugh Montgomery actually gets hit by a piece of ice, falls down, and when he regains his footing, uh, his firearm is discharged and the other soldiers follow suit. So it comes back to the idea uh, that history, much like life, is complex. Uh, and in this regard, in terms of the Boston Massacre, uh, we question, were there any good guys or bad guys, and did were they present on one side particularly or the other? And when we come to the truth, when we critically analyze this and look at the, the historiography, I think one comes to the conclusion that it was much more complex and there were good guys as well as bad guys on either side. Were there colonists that were trying to de-escalate this situation? Absolutely. Uh, were there colonists that were adding uh, to the tension and problem? Absolutely. Uh, and so, of course, should the uh, British soldiers, should they have all fired into this group? Uh, perhaps not, right? Uh, and so <clears throat> the propaganda that was used during that time, uh, we have to remember that it was propaganda, and we simply can't solely rely on that to find truth. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.